All right, another come from behind victory for the Colorado Avalanche, this time against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Down three to nothing. They score five unanswered and win this thing five to nothing. Is this sustainable to keep winning this way? As entertaining as it is, we'll talk about that. A very good, successful run against the top teams in the league for the abs. We'll discuss that. And a couple more abs punch their ticket for the all-star game. One you would expect. One, maybe a little bit of a surprise. All that and then some on this episode of Locked on Avalanche, Common Abs. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Avalanche fans, welcome to the Locked on Avalanche podcast. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team Every day, I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciate it. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LLP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us over on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And make sure you are subscribed to our subtext. The link to that is in the show notes below. Because when you do, you become a very special insider of Kyle and myself. Chat with I, with us one-on-one. And uh, we get your opinions on everything abs, which we share on this very podcast. All right, sir. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that abs all-star talk in a little bit. Uh, going to start off right off the bat, man. Another entertaining game from a fan standpoint. Although you don't like them having to, you know, spot the other team multiple goals that you have to come. The good thing is, like, they're spotting them goals early and often. So you have a long time to cut, come back and get back into the game. And that's really what they're doing. And it's just, it's weird because this was a game where you never feel like the abs are completely out of it, especially when they give give up that many goals early on you do feel like okay like we can get back into this thing um but with the team that the abs had out there at least for for the abs you're down nachuskin you're down miles wood you have two defenders playing forward in this game you got down three to nothing you didn't feel like they were going to phone it in but you felt like it was going to be a very difficult task because Toronto is a good team. I know people love to hate on them. They're like the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Yankees of the hockey world, but they are a good team on their home ice. It just seemed like not an impossible task, but a very difficult one. And they pulled it off. They just, we'll get into it, but I want to get your thoughts overall on, on just the, the overall craziness of, of this game that they came back and won. Yeah, I was sitting here. Uh, I got my kids to bed. I'm juggling school. I have the game going on, and I have social media going on as well. And it is a beautiful story. When you you know how all of the social media updates have updated now, where you can refresh and you get the old stuff kind of <laughs> interspersed with the new fresh stuff. Mm-hmm. My word, that first period. If there was not a look at this roster, I can't believe Bednar put this out there. Look at this. This is one of the worst periods I've ever seen. And now, mm-hmm. when it's all said and done, we're we're sharing. Look at Steve Dangles losing his mind over this <laughs> comeback. Yeah. This is this is what you want to see. This Avalanche team, notorious for having great third periods. They shifted the momentum in the second. The first did not look good, but you mentioned this well, team yeah. was depleted, mm-hmm. and it took a minute for everybody to kind of get going. And that second. That second period, things really started shifting. In the third, the like it's this is a really good Avalanche team, and I feel like yeah. it's for so many points during the season, I've been able to kind of pick and say, well, this is a problem. This is a problem. Yes, there are still problems, but this Colorado Avalanche team is eight one and one in their last ten. Like this is a, a look at their previous games. They are beating some really good yeah. teams. Oh yeah. This is not well. not just squeaking <clears throat> through either. So this game is almost a testament of where the Colorado Avalanche are now. And again, kind of rewind to last year and the year before, this isn't even a full healthy roster. Right. 
I, there was a lot of tweets and a lot of posts getting deleted uh, once mm. the have started making their comeback because I saw it too. I saw a lot of people like, oh, I'm shutting the game off. If you haven't learned by now to not shut this uh, the game off when the Avalanche are playing, uh, I really don't know what to tell you anymore. But um, And I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, yeah, I was in the bag that they were going to come back. I, you know, I get it, but come on now. Let, let, let's not go that far after half of a period. But the interesting thing is, like, I didn't think the the first looked bad based on the score. Mm. Uh, but but the way like those goals came for Toronto, all three of those goals were unassisted. Mm -hmm. All three of them. So that tells you something when you have unassisted goals and three of them back to back to back something fluky is going on and that's kind of what happened for those goals so they, they were not like goals that toronto developed and and had really good offensive possessions they were kind of flu a lot of goals in this game seemed to be fluky goals right and 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 toronto had had three of them so i look at that and i'm like man like they, they really they really didn't stick it to you I mean, hey you got goals I'm not mm -hmm. trying to take away from them. Like you get goals any way you can in this league. Um, so I felt like, man, if they if they can just tighten up a little bit more on on kind of like loose pucks, battling like 50-50 against the boards, things like that. Like it's just some, you know, you can't the one the one that went off uh was it Johansson's shoulder or the first one? Um I think I, it I was it, I think it was it the second one that went off right, Joe. It went, went off somewhat like it just went off a shoulder, like a ping pong ball, like stuff like that was just weird. Yeah. But what do the abs do? And and we keep saying this guy, like they they have the mentality of just keep playing our game. And man, like they shut down the the top end guys for Toronto. Absolutely shut them down. Did you hear like the, out of out of Nylander, Matthews? and Marner. I heard Nylander's name the most, which was not a ton. And then I heard Matthew's name. I didn't hear Mitch Marner's name at all. He was a non-factor. All three of them are really non-factor. I mean, Nylander, I think, thought played the best out of all three of those guys, because that's like their, their, that's their big three, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But they, they absolutely shut them down. Austin Matthews had one shot on goal. He is, you know, outside of my avalanche fandom, um, the best goal scorer in, in the league, if you ask me. Um, and to shut him down, literally, like you, you have a really good shot of winning that game. And then you just methodically, while you're coming back and, and you're getting your goals, you're winning your puck battles, uh, you shut them down on the other end. It, it was just late. Let's just stick to our game. And we, this is not insurmountable. It's going to be tough, but we can do it. And boy, did they, I was really, really impressed with the abs. And, and I wasn't upset about the three goals because I didn't really feel like they were like these unbelievable Toronto goals where they were just sticking it to you. The abs had really good offensive possessions uh, and they just couldn't, you know, the, the goals weren't going in, but you felt like if they can keep playing this and get one or two, we're right back in this thing. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and and the thing is with the Avalanche, that first goal that comes from Colorado would be Jonathan Drewin. And I feel like everything mm. that man does right now is a lightning rod. That it's instantly great. it fires yeah. the team up. Everybody is it's Nachushkin 2.0. This whole Drewin mm -hmm. project, they're they're cheering for him. Like every goal, every point is a big deal, and for it to be followed up by Miko and then Cogliano. Like mm -hmm. you're building off of this is what you want. And for you, we've seen this team isolate Connor McDavid. We've seen them just completely yeah. take him out of a playoff series. Like this is what you want to see against this high profile. Like we've heard Willie Nylander ever since this contract, we've heard it every day. And then he comes to the game and they take out Austin Matthews, Willie Nylander, Mitch Marner, and Tavares like, you don't there's not a mention of them. I even flipped it in the third period over to Sportsnet Radio mm -hmm. just to hear what you could possibly be saying when here we go. They're coming back from 3-0. They let up a 3-0 lead. I want to hear it live in person. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about 
the superior play of like Nathan McKinnon. And you're it's it's noticeable yeah. what this team could do when they you talked about not feeling like the Avs were out of it. The Avs feel that way too. And as long as they are sticking to their game plan and doing what they're supposed to do, they can beat anybody. Oh, 100% they can. Yeah. I mean, like they're feeling it right now. And even, even with the teams they're putting out there, or the one that they did against Toronto anyway, which is not ideal, which you're not going to see a lot of, um, they, they still managed to play that everybody is bought in. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And it doesn't matter who's in what position. When you have uh, Caleb Jones playing a forward spot, um, and, uh, and Sam Malinsky's in there, who continues to play great, um, you know, and, 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 you know, you have, uh, McDermott who's still not getting a lot of minutes, but that's what you're putting out there and you're not mm -hmm. relying on those guys, but you know, they're, they're getting four or five, six minutes. That's it. So the, 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 the big guns have to step up and, and they, they are all of those guys right now are, and I know a lot of people want to say like, well, what if they don't, well, what if they, if they don't, then they're not doing their job because that is their job. How we're talking about like the bottom guys, like their job is to do what bottom six guys do, and 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 you're, you're, the bottom six that you put out there is not what you you're typically going to have. But your top guys are playing top top of their game right now, and if they don't, then you have to deal with that, and that that's not what you want. That's not ideal, but that's what you pay them to do. That's why you pay Nathan McKinnon that money. That's why you pay Kale McCarthy. That's the expectation. So we can sit here and say, like, well, if, if that runs out, if that runs out, then the Avalanche shouldn't win because those are your guns and that's who you rely on. And the other guys have to fall into place. But man, it's it's everything right now is just is is clicking for the Avs. And you know, and I say that knowing like I don't want to keep getting down. Like that that mm -hmm. is that is I don't want to say it's a problem, but it's just like you don't want to keep winning games like this. You want to you want to be the one that's up three to nothing, then just put your foot or skate on their neck. And like real quickly, like this Avalanche team is buying into the Avalanche way. And the last time I seen this, an Avalanche team buy into the Avalanche way, they won a cup with Abe Kubel. They had playoff heroics with Darren Helm while the top line was performing. Nights that they didn't, you got nights mm -hmm. from Josh Manson. Like, don't don't start predicting what if this team doesn't like your top line doesn't perform. They have more talent than the the Stanley Cup team, and you're getting Miles Wood coming back. He's coming back from that relatively soon on one night of this back to back. Like I think he's he coming just has back. like the flu or something. I don't, I don't exactly. think he's. I like, think yeah, that's what injury. Nachushkin is dealing with as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those pieces, when they start coming back, it's better than the cup run team. So if that top line doesn't work, I guess that what? That was a good the team, next, man. It was that a cup good run team. team. Was a really really good team. I I'm not I'm not I'm not to the point of saying like this team is better well, than that. No. Potential but they're playing, they're yeah, potentially sure. potentially. yeah, the potential, and because it was one of those. Well, if the top line doesn't perform, the next guy stepped up. This team will do the same because a lot of things are lining up in the exact same way. Don't mm -hmm. lose faith. And guess what? You still have the best team. You, you yeah. like Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen, you're set. I mean, to, to win that game and uh, not and, and to know that you have Nachuskin coming back, hopefully soon same with wood and then lekanen who made the trip he said those three guys that could be coming back and you're playing the way that you are right now so yeah uh things are good a couple other things we're going to discuss on this game uh and and that that goal by mckinnon chef's kiss with that one mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about that coming up next First, we are going to talk about FanDuel and the FanDuel Sportsbook app. The NFL regular season has wrapped up. We are in the playoffs. Playoffs? Unless you're the, unless you're the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose, and the app is super easy to use. There's many different ways to bet, like the same game parlay. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup with FanDuel. It's an official partner of the NFL. 
All right. Um, a couple of things I want to get to with this game. Obviously, is, is that that go ahead goal, the game winning goal in the end by Nathan McKinnon. Um, everything about that is just pure insanity because there were so many moments in that one specific play where you know it's a drop back pass to Miko entering the zone. He goes cross ice. Uh, McKinnon just basically stops on a dime. Stick handles a couple times. I don't know who the defender was for Toronto who who's trying to stop him and kind of sprawls out and he kind of is spinning and he even does the stick whip to try to knock the puck that way. Nathan McKinnon kept his composure during all of that. And you can see the 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 I wish I knew who the defender was so I can just say McCabe. Name, but I, McCabe. is it McCabe? Okay. So McCabe is is kind of he he goes on his his stomach to and he's kind of twisting at the same time. His skate just and it and McKinnon knew he, it was so in control. Just it was like the Matrix, and yes. it just went yes. by him. And then the stick comes whipping around, and McKinnon does a uh, just a the slightest little deke with the with the puck, and his the stick just goes by Nathan McKinnon's blade, and then now he's <clears throat> out of the play, and McKinnon has all this time and space, and he rips it into the net. I watched that thing over and over again, and I am just <clears throat> in awe because there were so many moments where it could have just broken down and the play ended or or something happened. And Nathan McKinnon being otherworldly just knew exactly like he he's no nobody else could do that, man. No, it was beautiful, especially when the stick came around and he just boop, moved it just an inch to the right. He knew exactly how much he had to move it so it wasn't going to get poke checked away. And then the end is history. I, I'm in love with that play. It's so good. It's so and good. I, I love how, like, the Matrix. That is the way I summarize it as well. <laughs> because we hear so many times on this team, um, when you're starting to find members like Drew in, and he mentioned it too, like the game is yeah. slowing down for him. I feel like that goal, that entire sequence, the Miko pass and everything, it felt like us as Avalanche fans were getting to witness what the Avalanche get to see when they're talking about the game is slowing down. Like you yeah. saw that pass, yeah. that pass to Miko. You saw everything developing and breaking down. This is a, a really good Toronto team in desperation, sure. trying everything they could to not allow that to set up. And you saw the, you saw the moves before, toronto did you saw exactly where it was going nathan mckinnon knew exactly what he was going to do and you're watching it all in real time and it felt like just a surreal experience you're watching them break them down and then the authority put on that goal mm. you saw the will and determination break in toronto and colorado just business as usual it was a just an immaculate goal and i'm almost wondering if if mckinnon was Kind of towards the end of a shift, and 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 I I think he might have been going towards the bench, mm. but he and this is his vision. Like he he yeah. sees things happen, he sees things developing, so he he had that whole left side of the ice. Nobody was there, and he sees his guys carrying the puck, and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to stick with this. And and I could be wrong on him ma making a change, but it looked like he he was all right. We're just gonna. If there was, no, if they were just gonna, you know, get to the center ice and dump the puck in, and then that was gonna be the switch. But he saw them carrying it in, at least from me, just kind of trying to read his body language, um, and he stuck with it. And man, it turned out to be one of my favorite goals of the year from him. Just and you know, you. and seeing that whole play, it made me think about what Taser was saying about we have guys that think they're playing the right way, and then you you look at this point to the season. You see those guys that are getting in there, they're just pushing the puck, pushing the puck, pushing the puck, dump and chase. Mm -hmm. Just that weird style where they can never get you could see the frustration in like Miko and Nuke and Nate when that when that play is getting set up and you can't hold on to the puck long enough to make things develop, or you can't develop things in that offensive zone transition where things just mm -hmm. don't happen. You see the frustration there. You see everything when it clicks, when the avalanche do what they want to do. Everything mm -hmm. slows down and it's effortless. And I feel like that's what Taze was talking about. Like, quit trying to push it, just let it work. And then that's where the avalanche 
that's where they get back to the magic. Well, we were talking a lot when we, at the beginning of the month, looking at this this stretch of of games right here. Um, that it just ended with the Toronto one um, of a, a stretch of, of games where they were playing upper echelon teams. And we mm-hmm. always talk about the Avalanche and how they play down to the level of their opponent, and you know, well, they play up to the level of the opponent too, apparently, because that stretch: Dallas Stars, Florida Panthers, Boston Bruins, Vegas Golden Knights, Toronto Maple Leafs. Five games. As went four one and zero in those yeah. five games. The loss was to the Panthers when that you know that was off the rail. They came back in that game, tied it back up, and then you know Florida just went to work on them. Fine, you, you have a loss, but you know that's a great stretch. Like you, you're all those teams when they played them were top ten in the league, overall top ten in the league, and you went four one and zero against them. That, that, that just speaks for itself, Kyle. I mean, I know people want to throw out like, oh, you know, well, look at your, your gives uh, save percentage in those games and you had to come back and something. So what? Mm-hmm. That That is building a resume as the season goes on. And those are moments that you can look back on at the end of the season and say, like, we did this before. When you get down in the playoffs, you can look back at these moments and be like, we've done this before. We've been here before. Because if you haven't done this and you get down in the playoffs, like, oh, God, now we're deer in headlights. What do we do? We haven't done this before. I get that it's not ideal, but, man, you have to, like, you know, getting wins in this league is getting wins in this league. I don't care how you do it. And even with you listing off what Hell Week was, what it consisted of, when you're listing off teams like Dallas, Boston, Florida, Vegas, like, my mm-hmm. stomach was turning. And I know the outcome of what these games were, 4-1-0. and oh. Like, that's it. And – it's not like, oh, we got lucky there. It wasn't like Ottawa last year, that that weird fluky goal that <laughs> yeah. you didn't feel good about getting out of that game. These were good, commanding, dominating performances that you wanted to see that you're still talking about. Like if you go back and look, you you can see goals and moments and instances where you're like, oh, I really love that. The Avalanche were one for four on the power play. Killed off one, um, the only power play for Toronto. Mm-hmm. Perfect penalty kill. Against the Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> like this is yeah. this is all wonderful moments against superior talent that you want to carry through. January is a proving month for this team, and this Hell Week is one of those examples. Yeah, and uh, now they'll probably go out and lose to the Canadians. So you betcha. Uh, <laughs> uh, one last thing to get to, and we want to talk about the uh, the Avalanche, which were named All Stars. Uh, kind of a surprise with one of them, and uh, obviously we have our sound check to get to as well. So we'll do all that. Mm-hmm. Coming up next. First, we're going to hear from Game Time in the Game Time app because you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in pricing, view from your seats, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And I've said it before, guys, we're at the beginning of a new year. So all of these summer concerts and summer tours. They're coming around. We've already bought two, my wife and I. Cake? Going to see Cake? We're going to see Third Eye Blind. Yeah. Blast from the past. Absolutely. And those tickets we purchased, seriously, on game time. So download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create the account and redeem the code locked on, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So let's get to um, some all star stuff. Even though we we don't like the game, we always like when an Avalanche player gets nominated and sent to the game anyway. Um, and we talked about last week that we just don't like the way that this is done. But two Avs got in, so we hey we got to talk about it. <laughs> One we kind of knew was going to happen in Kale McCarr. I think I think Kale's on the level of he's just going to go in on re- name recognition every single year. Uh, people outside of the Avalanche fan base love the guy, so he's just he's one of those household names. He's going to be getting in if the if the league continues to do it this way. He's going to get in, you know, whether it's that one guy who gets in automatically based on the team or fan voting. We kind of expected that. We thought maybe it might end there. Maybe if, if there's enough push for Nachuskin, who I think is deserving of it, and if there's enough push for Miko, who is definitely deserving of it, maybe one or one of those guys like 
slide in like they did uh, last year because that's how the Avs, the Avs had three, you know, with Nate, Nico, and Kale all going. But it was not Miko Rantanen and it was not Val Nichuskin. It was Alexander Georgiev who's going to the All Star game. A bit of a surprise, and, I, and I'm curious to think of how you think this happened. I mean, I think Avalanche fans just voted for him because he's an Av, but you need more than that. You can't, you know, it's just not the Avalanche fan base voting for him that was enough. It's it's from across the league where I think people were voting him in, and are they just looking at the wins and thinking like, well, uh, you know, he's he's number one in the league in wins, so he must be doing something right. It. I had a terrible just flashback to John Scott 2.0. Oh, it's not like, that bad. Come on, <laughs> that's not. No, that. and, <laughs> and when you want when you want goalies, you don't want to care about the All Star game. Like it's not going to yeah. break his confidence. This is par for the course. Like yeah. nobody cares about goalie play in the All Star game. He's just going to no, get in don't. there and coast. Yeah. And guess yeah. what? He might have a better save percentage in the All Star game, not even caring than actually caring and mm-hmm. giving us an eight twenty six. But <laughs> no, I I saw I saw that he was selected, and I was like, well. Well, that that's something. And then I went on about yeah. my life because guess what? Right, right. When he goes to the All Star game, you're going to see him. You're going to be like, oh, there's there's your gift. Yeah. And then you're going to forget about it. And then you're going to turn it off after the first period. Never think about it again. No, I, I don't think it's you know. I, I think it's just the shock of like, wow, like nobody nobody had that. Nobody expected that. <laughs> Everyone another focused goalie on... in the central. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, everyone, like I said, everyone's focused on like uh, Miko being deserving of it. Yeah, true. And Chuskin being deserving of it. So um, I, I just was not a, when when I saw that 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 post come up, I was like, wow, like okay. And we had the numbers. I think he was like fourth overall for for goalies, so he was right there. Um, and then and then this is the other part of the the also voting that I hate the last day. Votes counted double for some reason. Like, what are we? This is not a game. Like, it's. I guess it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like talking out of both you sides. You got the daily it double. Thing. It's so dumb. Like, oh, now your vote means means double. Why? Why does it mean double? It shouldn't mean double. It's. This is just the the nonsensical nature of the also. We've turned it into like a punchline, basically. <laughs> of oh, your votes are double. Like you have double coupons today with your vote. Um. I, I, who, who knows what put him over the edge, but I mean, I'm happy for the guy. Like he's, he's taken a lot of ripping for, from the avalanche fan base this year. Um, I don't, he seems to be playing well as of late. So, but that's not really what pushed him over the edge. I think a lot of people look at the wins. I think a lot of people saw that and said, uh, I, don't, I just got to vote for a goalie. He's at the top. I'll just check that box. No, it's, it's one of those you're turning in your goalie vote. Who is Alexander Yorgiev? Congratulations, it's the daily double. Oh wow, I didn't even care about voting in the first place, but that's cool. But yeah. when you're when you're thinking about another goalie, because we talked about this when we were breaking down Alexander Yorgiev, this is not an incredible year for goalies, named goalies. Um, it's a rough year. So yeah, if you have to vote right. in, if you yeah. get to vote in a goalie, you're just like, well, who's the Avalanche goalie right now? It doesn't really matter, but. I mean, look at where they're sitting in the standings. They're fourth best team. Let's just mm. let's Throw send him, him there. Yeah. Good to go. It's true. Like goal, goalies in the All Star game, you don't really pay attention to that so much, just because you know the game is. It's like defense in the NBA All Star game. It's just yeah. like doesn't happen. So, nope. but congratulations. I mean, it, it's kind of a big deal. It's his first All Star game for him. So good for him. Um, all right. Last thing that we get to is obviously our sound check. Uh, Kyle and I pick a song that we feel best summarizes the most recent game. Put these songs up on a playlist over on Spotify. Just go search for LOA Soundcheck. Volume number three, this one is. So what do you got for the Avalanche comeback victory over the Toronto Maple Leafs? Three goals in the first period. From Toronto, Mm. two in the second, three in the third for Colorado. Love it. My song, naturally, I'll stick around from the Foo Fighters. Love it. Just because they don't go away. No, they don't. They they don't let it get out of hand. It's on the verge. It teeters on the verge. Like, you know, you let the other team get that one more goal and four to nothing. Obviously, you don't have to tell anybody. This is pointing out the obvious is much more daunting than three to nothing. So, yeah, they they do. They just they stick around and. It's almost reminiscent of Muhammad Ali letting 
his opponents just gas themselves in the opening rounds. And then once you've <laughs> given it all, the avalanche will come right back and then hit you with a couple punches after you think you've won this thing. And they'll take it yeah. right out of you. Like some false hope almost. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the realm that I went down is, is uh, the song I picked is from Our Lady Peace. Um, and the song is called Heavyweight. And I, I just kind of, it's so funny you mentioned that Muhammad Ali, right? As I'm saying, <laughs> having a song called Heavyweight. Um, yeah. th that's they just they they can stand and they can take your best shot and then they just they they come right back yep. and they're never out of it and and maybe this is also speaks to the two teams uh that were playing in the game and the teams that the avalanche just faced off in the four previous game all heavyweight teams mm -hmm. and and that will be in the playoffs and and who knows who who makes a run in the playoffs but um it's it's easier said than done and i think the avalanche just really kind of showed everybody like if, if people are paying attention to those last handful of games the avalanche just played and the outcome of them save for one um that's a that's a heavyweight team right there in my opinion so that's what i went with yeah, yeah. you and it's the dexterity it's the conditioning like they carry themselves mm. as a heavyweight team this is not a fluke like mm -hmm. this team is for real and they've been Absolutely. for real for a long time. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So, all right, that is going to wrap it up. Uh, yeah. As with the back to back to start off this week. So uh, we will discuss that first one against the Montreal Canadiens. Alex Newhook. Is, is he, was he injured or is he, is he playing? I have not really kept up with Montreal this year. So I drew in return. Drew in's return. That's true. Um, and if Leckenden was there, that'd be nice too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know I know Newhook was hurt, but I don't know if he, he came back. So if he's there, it'll be a, a fun rematch against him. So if not, whatever. We still play the game. Uh, right, he is not listed as injured right now. Okay. All right. So maybe he'll be on the ice. So, all right. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to discuss that abs and Montreal game. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow.